Hi guys, in this video we will be learning about the carbon cycle. This will include learning about the origins of carbon on Earth and understanding the major stores of carbon. So to give a brief introduction to the carbon cycle, the carbon cycle is the cycling of carbon between its different stores and this can be seen in this diagram here. So the stores include the ocean, the land, beneath the land, which is called the lithosphere, and I'm going to come on to this, and also the atmosphere. And there are a variety of processes that transfer carbon as an element between these different stores. So to talk about carbon, carbon is one of the most chemically versatile elements on Earth. And this means that it forms a variety of compounds more than most other elements. And it's also present in all life forms. And as I just said, it's cycled through the earth, through the carbon cycle. Carbon can also be found in two different forms, being organic and inorganic carbon. So organic carbon is the type of carbon we find in biomass. So this means the type of carbon in plants and animals. And inorganic carbon is carbon found in fossil fuels, such as oil and coal. So there are a variety of very important carbon compounds that we need to know about. The main one being carbon dioxide, which is a gas and is also a greenhouse gas. And we're going to look at the greenhouse gas in greater detail in another video. But this is essentially important for keeping the earth warm. We also have methane, which is another greenhouse gas, also known as CH4. And we have calcium carbonate, which is also known as limestone. We have our hydrocarbons, and these are our fossil fuels, such as oil and gas and coal. And we also have carbon in biomolecules, such as things like proteins and DNA, and DNA is what makes us who we are. So where does this carbon come from? We're now going to look at the origins of carbon on Earth. And these are formed from four different places. This is where they originate from. The first one being the Earth's interior and the Earth as you may know has a series of layers. We have a core, a mantle and a crust and a lot of carbon originates in the mantle which is this part here. This is the Earth's crust and below it we have this semi-molten layer called the mantle. You don't need to know about this but just know that a lot of carbon comes from the Earth's interior. This carbon is then transferred into the crust or into the atmosphere at plate boundaries. And this is an example of a plate boundary here moving apart and the carbon that's stored within the crust moves up on top of the crust um, through things like volcanic eruptions. Then we also have major stores of carbon such as biomass, which is plants and animals. Also, the oceans are stores of carbon, as carbon dioxide is dissolved in the oceans. And also, we have processes of carbon removal. And this is when carbon is being removed, say, from the atmosphere by trees or plants doing photosynthesis. But also, carbon can be removed from the atmosphere or from the oceans when it's locked up in sedimentary rocks. And we're going to look at some of these processes in greater detail. But it's just important to know that carbon originated from the Earth's interior. And that's the way the carbon cycle works, is that with the carbon starting in the Earth's interior, it's eventually cycled back into the Earth's interior from reaching the atmosphere and the oceans and being circled back. So now we're going to look at some of the major stores of carbon on Earth, and these are divided into four different categories, which are summarised in this diagram here. And these categories include the hydrosphere, which is water or the oceans. We have the lithosphere, which is essentially in rock and the upper layers of the Earth's crust. We have our biosphere, which is the living part of the carbon cycle so and this includes the soil plants and animals and then we have lastly our atmosphere which is where we have carbon in its gaseous form as most likely carbon dioxide or methane 
So we're going to look at these four stores in more detail, starting with the lithosphere. And the lithosphere, as I showed you in this diagram, is the parts of the crust and the upper mantle. And this is where we find carbon in its inorganic form, in fossil fuels and in limestone. And we can also find it in lower quantities in its organic form, in humic substance, which is simply decaying material. So this is the process whereby living material dies and decays and the carbon is then cycled back into the rock and so on through the process of decay. And within the lithosphere, we have carbon stored in different places. So we have carbon stored in fossil fuels, as mentioned before, so that's things like coal, oil and gas. In the soil, also in peat, this is another word for decaying material and also in marine sediments and so on, such as sedimentary rocks found at the bottom of the ocean. Then we have the hydrosphere, and the hydrosphere is mainly the oceans, and as I mentioned before, CO2, or carbon dioxide, is dissolved into the ocean water. And we also find carbon in the oceans locked up within organisms. So there's carbon dioxide and carbon as an element um, within fish and other organisms such as plankton, as well as um, some oceanic plants that live in the upper regions of the ocean. And carbon is stored within the water of the oceans in three different levels. So we have the surface level, and this is where we're going to find most of our plants because plants need to do photosynthesis to survive, so they need sunlight, so they're found on the surface layer. We have an intermediate layer, and this is the kind of deeper water. And then we have our living organic matter, which includes things like fish and plankton, as I mentioned before. So those are our stores of carbon within the hydrosphere. Then we have our biosphere, which is our kind of what we could term the living part. So this includes our plants and our animals. So animals and living vegetation, but it's also found in decaying plant and animal matter, which can be called plant litter, soil, humus and peat. So plant litter is when leaves and things fall off plants and they're simply kind of lying on the floor and then they begin to decay and they form what's called soil, humus and eventually peat. And then lastly we have the atmosphere and Carbon dioxide as a gas is found in the atmosphere and its current concentration is 0.04%. And you might think this is quite a small figure. However, this is actually really, really significant as just this tiny amount has a significant effect on controlling the Earth's temperature. We actually need carbon dioxide as it actually makes the Earth warm. However, too much of it, and if this concentration increases, will cause increased warming to levels that we don't need. So it's important to keep our carbon dioxide levels constant. And without any carbon dioxide, the Earth would be much colder than it actually is right now. So through the last 50 years or so, the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide has actually been increasing. And this is called the greenhouse effect. And this is causing the greenhouse effect. And this has been measured on the Mauna Loa curve, which was a graph produced in an observatory in Hawaii that's been measuring carbon dioxide concentration over the last half century. And the graph looks a little bit like this. And this line represents the increasing concentration of carbon dioxide over time. And this has been happening since the Industrial Revolution. And this is where we've had increased use of things like fossil fuels and increased urbanization. So we have higher carbon dioxide emissions. And this has been caused mainly by human activities, which have been releasing greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And it's causing global warming due to an increased amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. We're going to learn about how CO2 acts as a greenhouse gas and causes this warming in another video. So to summarise this section, we have stores of carbon in four places on Earth in the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the biosphere and the atmosphere. And... The carbon cycle is the movement of carbon between these four major stores. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, 
Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-Level Geography a walk in the park.